Hello, today we'll be creating a new decision model and we're going to be using a task model. So inside your studio, we're going to be creating a new decision automation. Let's give it a name for this project and click the create button. Now, once that loads, we'll be starting a new decision model project. And what we see here is our landing page and we're going to create a new decision. Let's give the decision a name, simple addition, choose the language and the description. That's all optional. So now we're going to start working the decision. Now, before we actually start creating a model, let's actually create the data first, right? So let's create a new data model. We call it my model and click create. And we're going to have a very, we're going to get, create a very simple model. Uh, a simple composite type. Uh, enumeration type is more like an array type. So in this case, we're gonna have a new type. We're gonna give it the type of name. We call it my data. So my data, we're gonna create some attributes. And this model is gonna add two numbers to each other. First uh, number, which will be of type. See, of type number. And then the second number will be the same. Here we go. Second number also of type number. So you can see you can actually nest objects as well. Uh, we're not going to do that. This is just a very simple scenario. So we're going to have my data, the first number and the second number. And we, of course, we're going to have an outcome. The We're going to call the, the results. All right, which will also be a number. Okay, so the purpose of this exercise is really to understand the, the connections, what needs to be set up in order to get you know, a hello world type of project going. All right, so we got the data model set up. That's all great. Let's go back to the first page. And now we can start creating a model. So we're going to create a new model. And here we have a choice. We create a decision model, a task model, or a predictive model. In this case, we're going to create a task model. Uh, we're going to create a my addition project. That's my task model. And here you can select the data source that you want to use. And we're going to pick my model. And we are going to be clicking the create button. Okay. Now, once that loads, now we you see over here, we have a rule flow project and we can add uh, in the folders, decision tables and business rules. So <clears throat> typically what we want to do is we want to lay out the decision logic. In this case, the logic is very simple. We're going to start, execute some rules and we're going to stop. If you want to have more rules, typically we do, we create folders, right? Um, in this case, uh, folder in the folder. Let's go here and create another folder. So then we need to be renamed this model, like say uh, my first set. And in this case, we're gonna have a, you know, a second set of rules. Second set. And this is the way you organize your rules. You put them in the folders and then you control the order of execution using the, the rule flow. Okay, let's remove this. So we have first set and the second set. So the rule flow starts here. And I like to call it, you know, main flow. Okay, so over here we have a rule task. <clears throat> Let's open it first so we can edit it. So we can open the rule flow. Over here we click the actual task and then we can say, we can pick the logic. What artifacts are gonna be executed in this rule task? We're gonna select the first set. So everything in the first set will be executed. We haven't created anything yet, it doesn't matter. We just pick. The fall and anything that we create in the future will be executed. All right, now you can then maybe add another um, rule task over here if you have a second set of rules that needs to be executed. We can leave them empty, it doesn't really matter. First set, and then the second set of rules that want to be executed. And then we also need to select for the second set, we want to select also the second folder. All right. Now, as you can see, you can create all kinds of branches and, and decisions in between um, so that you can create you know, complex logic into your rule flow. Okay, so now we have created the rule flow. Let's close that and go back to our model, our full structure. And now let's creating our first set of rules. Okay, that's where we click 
on the first folder. And we want to create a very simple business rule. And then maybe later we're going to create a table. Okay, so um, let's create a business rule. So what we want to do is we simply want to add something. So it's always true. If something's true, then um, set something. Okay. I forgot something. Apologies. So we're going to create a, a variable set. Okay. We're going to create a variable set. And my variable set is going to be called my data. So my data. Here we go. My data. Of name my data. And it's going to be called um, the data. Okay. So it's called the data. So that's the variable that we're going to be using. Let's move it to the root. So it's a variable set vars. Okay. All right. So now we have variables that exist into our project space. It's called data. We have a flow. And now we can create the business rules. Okay. If true, then you, now you can see our vocabulary has been updated. So we imported uh, the data. We associated the data to a variable and now it's visible. Okay. So set the result of the data to the first number of the data plus the second number of the data. All right, so now we're just simply doing one, one plus one, adding two numbers together and store the result in data. Okay, so we haven't really made a condition yet, but just creating an execution at uh, two numbers. All right. Now <clears throat> we created that first rule. Let's create a second rule. In this case, we're going to create a decision table. Okay. And in the decision table, we're going to have headers. Okay. Inside the headers, we can say first number and we can create conditions. Let's say if the first number is something or higher than, and the second number is higher than, maybe we can create a result. All right. So we have the first number, second number. We right click on the column. And we create defined column. In this case, what we do here, we can you know press the space bar, and then we can see if if, and that shows us the um, the column as well. Okay, we can actually start typing, or we can search inside here the you know the elements that we want to see. If the first number of the data is a number equals a number is larger than or smaller than. So here's where we set the default operator. Okay, so let's do equals a number as a default operator. Okay, and then we can set the condition. And we do the same thing for the second column. The second number of the data is something. Okay, so that's the condition in the header. And of course, then we can you know, add numbers if the first number is two and the second number, uh, sorry, the first number is one, the second number is one. And here, then we set the result. Okay. Then we set the result of my data to something. Okay. And of course, we can do a set it to one or two, but in this case, you know, in this table, we want to have maybe, uh, if, if one and one, we want to have a two. Okay. If two and two, uh, we want to set that result to, to four. Now, what we're also going to do is we can change the operator. Let's say if this is more than, lower than, let's say it's more or equal than three. Okay. And if this one is more or less than three, then we're going to set the result to 99. Let's say that that's what we want to do. This is how we can do the logic to make that happen. Okay. Let's call it assignment table. Maybe we have some mapping, but the better we want to do, right? So we have the assignment table over here. Well, one is two, and there's more than three or equal to three, then we set 99. Okay. And inside the rule flow, we have the first set that's going to be executed. Yep. And the second set is going to execute everything in that second flow. Okay. Let's go and then create a function. So in order to uh, you know do this, we have to create the input and output parameters for this function. So we're going to add input and output parameter. Uh, we have the vars, the variables, and then we're going to select the variables that we're going to 
be inserting and coming back. So this is in and out of the project. Click done. So this, this is the signature basically for our project that is going to go in and out. Okay, then we can go to run. And over here, we can add a new test data set. And here we have my data. First number, let's say is one, and the second number is two. Let's run it. And the result is three. Okay, let's say it's four and five. We're very interested in what the result is going to be. It's 99. Excellent. All right, so now that we have our first project, we also want to uh, deploy that first project, okay? So let's go back to our main page over here, and then we have to select the decision operation. Okay, so we create a new decision operation. We're gonna pick the My Addition project. This is the model that we have, this is the name, and these are the parameters that are gonna go in and out of our decision operation. The decision operation is kind of the front Kind of the, the rest of the web service to our project okay because you might have multiple projects in here so now that has been um, created i can see my decision op or, or, or pro operation over here that's the one we've just defined okay so now what we need to do is we need to you know um create a new version okay so we're going to share the changes to share the changes, but it says I cannot share my change before connect to remote Git repository. All right, so let's do that. We're going to go connect to a new Git repository. So here we need to add the, the name of our Git repository. So let's pick that. Um, this is the one. Now, what is really important is before you actually get started is that you inside your developer settings of your GitHub is that you create a personal access token. This personal access token is of type classic and you create a new token and you copy the password and you put that password later in your connection details. Okay. <clears throat> so when I go to my repository, I have here a repository. Let's say I pick this one. So let me grab the repository URL and go here. And this is my link. Okay. So I copied that repository over here and I create my credentials. So that's my username, password. And of course, I'm gonna grab my um, key, right? Remember the person access token, I use that to connect. Okay, now the GitHub uh, repository has been successfully connected. Okay, let's go back to our project over here and let's share our uh, changes. So we're going to share our changes over here. Okay, we're gonna share our changes. We're gonna make alt uh, ready for testing. Share that. So after we share the changes, we can then create a new version of it, right? The changes were shared and then we can deploy. You can see create version from the latest set of shared changes. So we can create a new version. Let's call V1 testing. Let's create that. Now we have this new version over here. And now we can choose what we want to deploy. So there's a couple of other services in this project already, but we're going to deploy simple addition. Here we go. Deploy simple addition. It's going to deploy that to our test server. All right, now that it's been deployed, we can actually browse the deployed endpoint. I click here. It will bring us to a Swagger definition file where we can see the actual endpoint itself and we can see the operations that are going to be required to, to run this, expand this, and we're actually going to try it out. So we can try it out and actually enter the data over here directly into, into JSON and then execute that. I'm going to see here that the result is three. Excellent. So very simple to actually develop, create, deploy a simple ADS task-based project. Thank you so much.